created this training tonight because I want you all to remember how much of the bomb.com you are and what you do. And if you're not the bomb.com, let that be your goal in 2023 is to become the bomb.com so that you can step into the power of charging what you're worth and the value that you bring. So we are going to talk all about that value tonight. My name is Sunday Gardner, and I am the founder of Online Travel Boss School and also lead trainer and a business travel coach. I talk, train, breathe, live, speak all things, launching and operating a successful and profitable travel business. And so I come to you weekly, every week, coming to you to talk about topics all about that. But this week, we're really going to get your mind straight around the value that you as travel advisors bring to the table. So I've got five things that we're going to touch upon today, because if you are just like the client I just met with, and one of the things I'm going to tell you a little quick story, I'm not you know going to name any names or anything, but I want to give you a story because I want to give you context because it was my story as well. When I started in this industry, I sort of understood how travel agents work. I didn't call myself an advisor. I thought I was an agent. Um, and I jumped in. I just jumped in. I like I am a diver when it comes to starting businesses. I was like, okay, I'm starting this. I'm tra- starting a travel business. Okay, who needs me to start booking for them? And I was like, I'll figure it out. I'll just figure out the processes. I'll figure out what I'm doing. And I just dove in, right? And I started taking a bunch of uh, supplier training. And I was confused as heck. I was confused. And so what my client told me earlier today, she was like, you know, I charge $25, but sometimes people don't pay it and they don't pay it. And I'm pretty new in the business. So should I even charge for it? Right? Like, is that even right of me to do? And I, and I, you know, had to keep myself composed because I'm so passionate about this very topic about charging for your worth. And I told her to come to this training tonight because I wanted you all like, what is the value of you, the amazing travel advisors that you are. And if you are yet to be amazing, then that should be, as you look at your 2022 and you go into 2023, this is where your opportunities for growth are. This is where your opportunities for goals are in terms of setting them around this passion that you have for travel. So travel, and we were talking, and you know, travel's not an easy business, right? The way we, you know, we make money is not easy. It's not like we sell a t-shirt and we get that money right away. We go buy the t-shirt, we sell the t-shirt, we get the money, right? Sometimes it's months, sometimes years until people go on trips and we get the back end commission, right? So this is not an easy business and it's not for the weak at heart. But if you, after all of that, say, I am in it to win it. Well, then let us talk about why you should be winning it. All right. So tonight we're going to talk about five reasons why your clients need you and why you're the bomb.com. So I know I'm totally dating myself when I say the bomb.com, but it is still my favorite phrase to say. So we're going to talk about, and, and I want you to take notes about this because if you are struggling with your own value proposition, right? Well, how do I articulate or how do I tell people that I am valuable and that they, that I deserve you know, this, the, the fees that I charge for my services. Maybe you don't have the right language. Maybe you don't know what are the right keys. I'm going to give you five value propositions that you bring to the table. And first item I want you guys to write down. So somebody write this is your value proposition. Number one is the knowledge and expertise that you bring to the table. Write that down. Knowledge and expertise. So Many of you all, how many of you all have certificates in the suppliers that you sell, right? I, pre-COVID, specialized in the cruise industry and had certificate after certificate of cruise industry certifications from the particular travel supplier lines that I specialized in. Do you guys? 
right? You already told me that you've already taken five in the last 12 months, greater than five trainings. Some of you say no, but if you're thinking about being in this industry and you don't have preferred suppliers that you're working with and you haven't taken their training and you don't know about them and you don't know your BDM and you don't know what makes them the bomb.com and what makes them the perfect match for your client, this is a great opportunity for you to learn, right? So, our value proposition is, is that we have unique, specialized knowledge that most average people don't have. <laughs> most average people that travel don't know all the stuff that we got. <laughs> they don't know all the things that we have. And I remember when I first started in the online space, I uh, read, read, heard, I don't remember where I get half of the knowledge that I get it, but it sticks in my head so I can pull it out at great times like this in a... And I read that to consider yourself to be an expert in a thing, you need to have produced, like this was particularly when I was going into the YouTube space, was that an expert is considered to have been practicing their craft for a thousand hours or more. And I thought to myself, wow, that's a lot, like a thousand hours, like it's a lot, <laughs> it's a lot of hours, right? And so, but if you think about for some of you who've been in the business for years, right? And I think about myself, like I'm celebrating next year. I think I think this year or next year, we're celebrating seven years. No, I think this year is seven years in the business. So next year will be eight years in the business of, you know, teaching people in the online space, right? And to be an expert, I confidently, you know, eight years ago when I was breaking out and I was just learning how to train people remotely and not actually physically be with somebody, I wasn't an expert, but I certainly am now because I have I have paid my dues in time. I have paid my dues in money. I have paid, I have been trained. I have done the thing that it is that I am now. You may say, well, I'm not an expert yet. I just started in the business. Then you should be striving for becoming an expert in the thing that you want to specialize, right? So I had a client a couple of years ago. She specialized in wedding destinations. I am not a big wedding fan. I don't like them. <laughs> I don't like going to them. I just don't like the whole, I love love, but I don't really like the whole wedding production, right? But when I talked to her, I remember when I had uh, my conversation with her and she like, like she exuded weddings. Like, I mean, it, like I literally, I wasn't even in, in I, I could hear it in her voice. I could hear it in everything that she talked about, the excitement that came out of her voice. Her specialty was weddings. She didn't necessarily have the travel experience, but she lived and breathed weddings. That was her thing. That was her jam, right? And so just because you may not have the expertise in, in travel, you do have an expertise in something, right? And you have an expertise in a type of person, right? And so that's really what I'm talking about. So I'm not saying that you need to have thousands and thousands of hours in the travel industry to be an expert because you really need to be an expert in the person that you get out of town, right? So if you know that person, that type of person, that persona, right? And you are the expert and you marry that with some knowledge of travel, and you show up for those people, that is what makes you the bomb.com, right? That right there is your unique selling uh, thing. My, my expertise is training. My expertise is business processes. My expertise and my jam is software, right? That's what I excel at. You know, I also excel at marketing. I also excel at Facebook ads. You know, I excel at those things. So it's not that I've got 20 years of of travel experience. I do have experience in travel, but my thing is being able to help you systematize how you run your business so that you're not running in circles when somebody asks you for a quote, right? That's what my jam is, right? So as an expert in that, I can show up feverishly, right? Passionately about that thing and help you achieve your goals. Same thing for you. So that's what you bring. That's your number one thing is that if you don't know what that thing is that you're an expert in, you don't know those people that you're an expert in, that should be your goal number one for 2023 is figure out who you get out of town and how you can be an expert to them. Make sense? All right. So number two is, and this is going to be a 
little bit different than what you what you would think because you, you you probably thought oh well she meant she means expert in like I need to now like immerse myself in Jamaica Hawaii Cancun you know Spain Portugal and like how do I keep it all straight don't get me wrong destination specialties are great they are awesome but literally if you do not know a thing about any destination in the world if you specialize in people and you become experts in the people that you service you can rely on somebody else's expertise in a destination like a destination management company right you can rely on others expertise in the thing that that is their jam right I don't claim to be an expert in every single facet of the travel industry. That's not what my claim to fame is. That's not what I come to you in. That's not what I do. I'm not, I don't know everything. I, I, I don't know everything. I can't possibly know everything, right? But I have a very, like, how many of you guys have seen the, the, the movie Taken, right? I have a unique special set of skills, right? <laughs> I don't kill anybody with them, maybe with kindness, but that's what my thing is. Same thing with you. So it's not that you've got to get thousands and thousands of expertise in the travel industry specific. You need to know about your specialty and how to get your people out of town to where they need to be. So really focus in on that in 2023, okay? So number two is time savings. You know, I have a unique spin on time savings because I think that, let me take a drink because I so think I'm dehydrated. Like I have been so thirsty for the last couple of days. Anyway, time savings. We, we live in a just right now um, society, world, I don't know what the right terminology is to call it. But on demand, like everything is on demand and at your fingertips. So since uh, we're in the information world and since the access to information is right there, everybody has, you know, do you remember back in the, I don't even know when, right? When you had to buy encyclopedias to get access to information, you have entire, you know, multitude of encyc encyclopedias with the access of your phone. It's not that people can't do what you want or can't acquire the information. Nobody's got the time to acquire the information, but you love it. That's your thing. This is your jam, right? You love researching. You love putting together packages. That's your passion, right? That's your jam. That's the thing that you are want to be or are the zone of that is your zone of genius, right? And so you save people time in doing that. So let me give you just an example of that, right? You guys just told me to research, manage, and um, do somebody's booking. It takes you greater than two hours, right, to do that. If somebody wants to get themselves and their family and their group or other people out of town, they have to do that, right? You are a time saver. And the people that you want to work with are the people that recognize that their time is of value and they want to save it by hiring, outsourcing somebody to do the work for them. And that's where you come in, right? So I want you to think about that, that your value proposition is the fact that you are saving people hours, if not only, we're going to get to the money, but you're saving hours of time in your expertise by allowing them not to have to worry about researching, comparing, understanding, reading. I mean, they do need to read the fine print of the things that you send them, but they certainly don't have to read the copious amount of information that you've read about particular suppliers and what they have to offer. You've done the comparisons. You know what the features are. You know why this resort is a better choice for them and is a better match made in heaven for them versus that resort because you know those properties, right? That's the time savings that you provide your clients, right? I don't want to work with clients who want to do it themselves because they don't value my time and they frankly don't value their time. You know, but who am I to judge, right? I don't want to be in a, I don't want them to make me in a position of judging them, right? I save you time. You either want to save time or you don't. I'm not going to haggle with you on the fact that you found something cheaper than I found it, pennies on the dollar cheaper. Fine. What did you hire me for? Right? 
So you save people time, work with those clients that want their time to be saved, that value their time to focus on their zone of genius so that you can focus on your zone of genius. I value my time. So I, I try to really minimize the work that I do in areas that aren't my expertise because it takes me longer to do it. Um, I waste a lot of time with trial and error. I waste a lot of time trying to make it work because I don't know how to do it, right? And I don't have that time. Like I need to be working on the things that I love to do and that I'm really good at doing so that I can do more of that, right? That's what I want to do. So that is this number two reason why you are the bomb.com is because you are a time saver for people. You help people get back to the things that they love, right? Now, if you're working with a client and she loves booking and researching travel and and you suspect that when she does the request, then I would ask the simple question before you do any lick of work, why are you utilizing my services? Don't be afraid to ask the question. Why are you using my services? What made you reach out to me? And the funny thing about when you ask pointed questions like that, people will give you an honest answer. So I like to ask daring questions like within the first five minutes of meeting a stranger is like, because it takes them off guard and they can't, they don't have the time to think of a lie, right? So oftentimes when you ask your prospective clients that seem to be do-it-yourselfers, why are you doing, why are you, why, why, are, why did you seek out my services? Why, are, why have you so, sought me out? They'll tell you because I'm hoping you can find it cheaper or I'm hoping you can do that. That's an indication that they're shopping. They're shoppers, right? Right. They don't really value time. They've already done the research. They're just seeing if you can match it or get it better. So get it on the table. Let them know. Listen, that's not what I do. Right. I can match it. Right. But this is the fee for me to do that. Right. Like so there's a cost for me to do the work for you. So value your time. Work with others that also value your time. All right. So that's number two. All right. How are you guys enjoying it so far? Let me know in the comments because I always like to know and connect with the fact that what I am saying is connected with y'all. So let me know. I am like I'm doing like this totally different camera situation, which does not allow me to see uh, the comments as easily as I would like to. So I'm just going to peek over here. Um, and awesome, awesome. Love the feedback. So thank you. You guys are finding value in it. All right. So number three is. Listen, I'm going to tell you a story because I love telling stories. So um, we did a we did our first fam trip this year in May. We went to uh, Cancun. I've been to Cancun many times, um, but I and I actually had been to this resort, but I hadn't visited all the resorts and um, several of the agents that we took. They had never vis visited the resort either. So we did a, a fam trip through Palace Resort and uh, hooked up with just an amazing BDM, Shayna. Um, she is with the Palace Resorts brand. I have a new BDM because uh, Shayna is really not mine. She's actually a colleague of mine's BDM. Um, and so the new lady, she's just started and we're working together because we're trying to put together something in 2023. And uh, Shayna, she said to us, she, uh, you know, so when you go on the fam trip, she you know, they took us around, they, you know, took us to all the properties in Cancun, we saw everything, and then uh, we had the black band. And so if you've ever been to a Palace uh, Resorts brand, the black band is the band that gets you to, it's the VIP band, and it gets you into the spa, their spa, general spa, like you can go and do the water, hydro, they have a hydrotherapy thing, and they've got all this, all these great perks that come with the VIP band, right? And, and what she told me was anytime you've got a client that's going, coming to the spa, just let me know Sunday and I'll hook them with VIP bands. And let me tell you, that's a bomb.com perk. <laughs> that's a bomb.com perk that I've got there. And I used it just for our family. When we went to Jamaica this past time, me and my husband, we had the, the VIP bands and we got there and the VIP bands were there and we did hydrotherapy and we did all of that, right? So we have access to perks because of the relationships that we have with our BDMs, with our suppliers, right? That the average, like, don't get me wrong, clients can get VIP, VIP bands themselves, but they have to pay for it. <laughs> they have to pay for 
for those VIP pants. All of my clients that I send to the Palace Resorts, I call Shana up. I'm like, I'm going to have a client there. She hooks them up with the, the, the VIP bands. It doesn't cost her anything to do it. It gives my client great will. Like, it's just all goodwill amongst the whole family, right? Me, my client, Shana, everybody. Because I, I refer more people there because I know that they're going to take care of my people, right? Same thing with you. That is the relationship. Your clients can't get that. You're the bomb.com, not them. They want your bomb.com perks. They want access to what you've got. And your friends and family, if you're allowing your friends and family to benefit from your discounts and your perks, right? Your friends and family know, but your clients also uh, benefit from that as well. Even after you account for your profit, you still are able to pass on perks and discounts to your clients and still as long as you price it properly, right? So you have access to things that the average Joe doesn't have because we're on the inside and because you are the bomb.com, right? So that is your value proposition number three. So if you're talking to a client and they're like, why should I pay you for your services? $250, $300, $500, whatever your number is, right? Why should I pay you for that? Is because I have access to perks that you can't get. End story, end the conversation, period. Be quiet, listen to what they have to say, right? That is your value number three, is that you have access to perks, discounts because of your relationships. If you don't have that and you're looking at me like Sunday, I don't have perks and discounts and relationships, Opportunity number three for you, get some, right? Who are your preferred vendors that you use? Your host agency has preferred vendors. Do you have their list? Do you know who the BDMs? Have you reached out to them? Are you always booking with fill in the blank uh, vendor? Who is the BDM there? What do they offer? Is there a competitor? Should you be working with them that will give you access to perks? Are you getting better? Uh, you know, are there perks for you as an advisor that you have access to that you aren't using or don't know about because you haven't done investigation? You know, it's not easy being, um, it, ain't, it ain't easy being wealthy, right? It ain't easy making money all of the time because if it were, everybody were, would be doing it. So that means you've got to do a little bit of work on your side to be able to position yourself as an expert, to position yourself as the person who has access to perks, right? You have to create that space for yourself. So if you don't have relationships with suppliers, you don't, or you don't like, let's say you have them and you don't like them. Find new ones, right? Who are the um who are the who are the competitors that you could potentially be working with? Do they have can you forge better relationships with them? It never stops with just one vendor. I can't think of a supplier that it's like, oh, this is the only vendor that I can go to. Not here in America. <laughs> like, I mean, when competition is so fierce and everybody is vying for the dollar, your dollar, your client's do do dollar, there is no reason for you to feel stuck or pigeonholed with any suppliers. That be it host agency, travel supplier, vendors, it doesn't matter. You're not pigeonholed. You have options, exercise them. Number four is personalization and customization. Your ability to personalize and customize. You are upfront and personal with your client. If you if you followed, you know, any of my trainings in the past, if you're new to me and you don't know what trainings I'm talking about, right? I have a very systematic a way that we approach gathering requirements from a request from travel, right? That that process is not a hey hey, Sunday, I want to go to Las Vegas and I get a scratch sheet of paper and I'm writing it on a paper. Uh, hey, dude, what's your date? How many people are going? And then I'll get back with you. That is not the process by which I understand their custom travel requests. That is not the process that I understand what makes them tick and what, what do they need special for this trip, why are they going out of town, right? There is a process that we follow to gather requirements, right? I am a I'm a business analyst. That is my background, IT business analyst. So I am 
accustomed to gathering software requirements, detailed requirements to build software products. And I treat my travel business the same way I treated gathering software requirements. I want to know everything I possibly can know about my clients. So when I sit down and design that amazing trip for them, I have all of the facts there. I do not like going back to the drawing board. I do not like going back um, and uh, missing requirements. I do not like going back and trying to figure out what, what this is that they want or what that is that they want because I didn't gather the information appropriately, right? Same thing for you. So I am able to create a personal experience. I'm able to create a customized experience that meets the requirements because our requirements gathering process is on game, right? <laughs> like we gather requirements in a fashion that warrants the price that they pay for the custom designed trip right? They're not going to find this custom design trip on Expedia.com. They're not going to be able to, frankly, design it themselves unless, of course, they're in the business, right? So you have that unique ability to be able to create, a, you, like I actually wrote this down, you're a matchmaker. Like, does it, did anybody ever watch that show Million Dollar Matchmaker? Like, I didn't really like the lady's voice, but I really liked the show because she matched people like she, the requirement was the guy or gal wanted to be with the rich person and the rich person wanted a guy or gal and she was the millionaire matchmaker, right? And so you are the travel experience matchmaker, right? So that means you've got to have both ends. You've got to have clients that want great experiences. You have to have suppliers that provide those great experiences and you need to know the requirements of each so that you can match them together, right? That is what customization is all about is I need to know what you need customized and then I need to go find or know, I already have in my, my arsenal of people that are great fits for what it is that my clients are wanting. That's what you do. That's what you should be doing. And if you don't do that, that's what would make you the bomb.com. That is what makes you the bomb.com is your ability to do that. All right. And then the last item is peace of mind. COVID numbers are spiking up again. Southwest canceled, what, some 80%? Is it, was it, is, that, is it that high? Like I was watching the news yesterday and then somebody else I saw posted like over 50%. I know it's over 50%. I don't remember exactly what the percentage is, but they canceled flights, right? How many of you all, you know, if you are booking flights and you're booking for Southwest, how many of you are all were helping your clients get uh, rebooked? helping your, uh, and, and if they couldn't get rebooked, were helping your clients, like, because they're going to need to get money, they're going to need to get vouchers, they're going to need to get compensated for this fiasco that is South, you know, uh, Southwest Airlines, right? What do you do in terms of creating peace of mind? Is you, like, <laughs> like, and I always, <laughs> it's so funny, my mom says that I say like so much, and I really do, because I must have just said it like 50 times just now, but I want you to think back for those of you who were in the industry in 2020, right? And um, February, March of 2020, when COVID broke and we had clients everywhere, cancellations were going out the roof and we had to um, get people's money back, get them rebooked, get them canceled, all of the above, right? That is what we do. And so any person that travels right now without an advisor, an advocate, which is what you are, right, has to do all of that themselves. I remember I had several group bookings. I was on the phone hours canceling, getting refunds, doing all of that um, information uh, from uh, uh, for my clients. They didn't do anything. They sat back and they called me and they're like, what about? I said, I've got it. I got it. Don't worry about it. I'll let you know when the refund comes. I will um, let you know what you need to expect. Okay. And that is how it went down. And so that's what we provide. We provide peace of mind. We are an advocate for travelers. And so when you think about your value proposition and what you do and bring to the table, that is it right? There is so many more things that you all do, but those were the top five that I could come up with. So what I want you to do tonight is if you're still like, well, I don't know, 
maybe I'm not, I don't know if I should charge 250, then you need to journal it. You need to journal some more ideas, right? Reach out, like reach out in the group and say, I can't come up for any other value proposition points. I can't figure out what the value is that we do. I want you to post that inside of the group and let us know and we will pour into you if you are having some self-doubt. So that are my, that is my five, but Listen, all along the way, I was going through some goals that you could be setting, right? We offer value. And so to make that experience even greater for our clients, here's just a couple of things I just want to reiterate that you can put down on your 20. If you're like a goal setter and you like you take the the end of the year to reflect and then you look at the for the upcoming year and figure out kind of what are the things that you want to do. That's kind of what I do. Here are some areas that you can take a look at in 2023 to increase the value that you bring to the table for your um your clients and the prospective clients and also to your business. So the first one is is uh to enhance your knowledge. So if you feel like any of those areas that we talked about, you don't have a person that you get out of town consistently, right? Then maybe you need to increase your knowledge on how to define a niche, right? And then what are the trainings that you need to get to specialize in that niche? I love the wedding industry because it's a really good one that people can understand. Who do you get out of town? You get brides to be and grooms to be out of town in an untraditional way where they can celebrate their love. Not at home, all right? And they get their people out of town. That's what wedding destination specialists do, right? It specializes in a type of person The destination is not as important as the type of person. Those people who want amazing wedding experiences out of town. That's what the thing is. So specializing in how to create amazing experiences for people out of town. That's the knowledge that you could get. I use it as an example, not to say that you need to specialize in wedding destinations, but enhance your knowledge in your specialty. Or if you don't have a specialty, get a specialty and focus in on enhancing that knowledge. Number two goal that you could set is expand your network. If you don't have a network of of suppliers that you work with, you don't know. Let's say you already work with the same set of suppliers and you don't know key people in in that supplier's organization. It's a great opportunity if you don't attend their events because all of the suppliers have some sort of training, some sort of networking, some sort of way that they can connect. There's an opportunity for you this year is to really expand your network. I just got... I think they just finished up their sale. It's the Adventure Travel Show. They were doing discounts as their Christmas sale. And um, in the Christmas sale... Uh, I think it was $7 off their $30 tickets. They've got a VIP day and all this stuff. And so they've got, uh, if you've never been to the Adventure, uh, Adventure Travel Show, love, love, love that show. I've been to the Dallas-Fort Worth um, one. That's where I'm from. I never have been to Atlanta. I'll be going to Atlanta if I'm in town. And it's really all the suppliers that you can think of in one location. Large suppliers are there. Um, and you get to meet the BDMs. You get to meet the people that are the the our our stick, right? The people that want to get to know us um, and get to interact with them and introduce yourself and shake hands. And these are great opportunities for you to network and get to know your suppliers, and then also find out what they have to offer in the in the year in the upcoming year. So definitely expand your network. So that's number two. Number three is implement. Um, technology. Um, I know many of you are not tech tech savvy or are not, and tech is not the favorite thing that you love to do. However, it is the most favorite thing that I love to do. It is the most uh, favorite thing that I love, 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 love to do. I love technology. I love processes. I love the tinkering with software. I love all of that. And so Um, software is only as good as the process that you have to use the software. And so if you, if you have already software, let's say you have a CRM system, you have travel joy, you have travelify, you have, you know, vacation CRM, you have whoever you have and you're not utilizing it, uh, to the best of its ability There's a great opportunity because software is intended to make your life easy as long as you have a process for which 
it's to make your life easy, right? Is you gotta have the process first. You can't assume that the software is gonna solve the problem if you don't know what the problem is and how you need it to be solved. So, um, but certainly implementing technologies, right, uh, is a really good way for you to, in 2023, help you uh, stop driving yourself crazy <laughs> if you are feeling kind of crazy about the way things are going in your business. So that's number um, four. And then the last um, goal item area that you can add to your 2023 list is improve your customer service. And so there's this um, book that I absolutely love and it's uh, Never Lose a Client a a a Again. Um, and it's by Joey Coleman. I think his name is Joey Coleman. I'm so bad with names. And uh, um, the whole premise of the book, and I always talk about this book because it really is a book that really changed the way that I uh, work with clients and how I, um, once somebody, you know, comes into my client world, how I treat them. And that really is the customer experience. So we spend a lot of time acquiring clients, right? you know, trying to sort of wine and dine them, but we don't spend, and in his book, he talks about that we don't spend organizations across the industries, all industries have this in common, is that they, a lot of industries don't spend the same amount of dollars that they spend on um, acquiring a customer to keep a customer. And so this whole book's premise is the customer experience, right? So from the time somebody meets you all the way until you deliver the service, how can you improve that experience? And there's always room for improvement um, in there. And so if you're looking for a good read, that is an amazing read, Never Lose a Client Again by Joey Coleman. Get yourself that for the new year. Um, and then just implement some of the things that he talks about inside of that book. Those would be great goals for you to add to your goal list in 2023. And so I'm going to pause, take a drink, and let me know how are you guys feeling about your um, goals for 2023 and how are you feeling now about your value and the proposition, the value proposition that you bring and why in 2023, if you are charging $25 for your design fee, you need to raise your prices. How are you guys feeling about that? Because what I am now going to do is I'm going to share with you my some little things that are coming to you guys in 2023. Um, it's so funny because like my light, I can see it in my window and it's like driving me crazy. I have like su such, you know, I'm not trying to minimize people who probably have uh, diagnosed ADHD, but I really do think I have adults, adult ADHD. Um, all right. So what uh, awesome like some of you guys are saying that you feel more confident you um uh, you love this you're in total agreement and that is great because i want you to end the year thinking not only can you do what you've set out to do not only can you create the business of your dreams you can't you are worth creating the business of your dreams and you are worth being paid for it right so let's start with your service fee so let me just kind of give you a little bit of sneak peek of what's coming in the first quarter of 2023 as we end this year. And, you know, I used to do this years ago. I used to do like, you know, recaps of the year and then um, all that. And I probably will um, introduce that in 2023, reintroduce that concept. I'm not going to do a year in a review because this year has been, it has been the, I will do this really quick recap for 2022 for me. This has been a rebirthing of Sunday year. It's been a really rough health year for me, uh, climbing out of, you know, really bad health um, and pain at the beginning of the year to where I am this year. So I'm just very grateful to God that I feel the way that I feel now and that things are definitely on the upside. My energy is back. So I'm just grateful to be here. I'm grateful to have the energy that I have um, right now and that I'm definitely on the upside of that pain. So going into 2023, you know, I've had to make a lot of shifts in terms of how I wanted to show up in this business. I knew that I still wanted to train. I still knew that I wanted to 
you know, be a business coach in the travel industry and do it, but I needed to make some changes. And so the last six months of this year, we really have been focusing and shifting that. And so, in, and you guys have started to see the realization of, of that uh, this, this last quarter as we've launched some new trainings and we've done some new things. So we're going to be continuing that in 2023, um, sort of taking, you know, I had this sort of eureka <laughs> this year that my superpower really is in um, operations and software. I love software and technology. And so that is really where we're shifting, um, you know, online travel boss and the way that we provide training for you all is really in the operations of your business. We will still do sales and marketing training, but right now for the, at least the near six months to 12 months, we're really going to be focusing on creating curriculums that are really focused on making sure that you've got sound, efficient operations that set you up for profitability. So we started that uh, with our Travel Joy training. Um, for many of you who are new in the space, you have come to me via our Travel Request uh, Blueprint training. I'm so super glad to uh, have met you through that and I'm glad that you have purchased those products. If you haven't got the Travel Request Blueprint you know, type travel request blueprint will get you the link so that you can enroll. The price point that we're doing at that is unheard of. And the amount of information and actionable um, things that we're providing in that blueprint are like no other in this industry. So uh, that travel request process is a six step process. We're going to be continuing just finalizing that whole program and just final and like, you know, what like zipping it up, tying it up, putting a bow on it and making sure that all of your questions are answered inside of the training and just making sure that the version. So we will most likely have a um, 2.0 version of that by the end of uh, the first quarter. But right now we have launched several products around the travel request process. Um, and really this process is the business of you accepting travel request. So let's say, you know, John says, hey, uh, I see Lorna posted that she needs it. Lorna, hey, Lorna, I want to go to Aruba. How do you take that request? How do you gather the requirements? How do you position your design fee, collect your design fee, research price and quote it? present it back to them, close the deal, and then convert it into a booking. The travel request process takes care of all of that using Travel Joy as the tool to manage the process. So that process, it's been, I think that you guys, those people that have gone through it, we've gotten great feedback. Like I said, we will, I'm going to continue to refine that training um, and that will be my focus in uh, Q1 is really refining that. Some of the things that are going to be coming out of that is that we are right now finalizing a partnership with a vendor that specializes in contracts, legal agreements uh, for the travel industry. So that's going to also be available inside of of uh, uh, our online travel boss school and access to that partnership at a discount. So we'll be releasing that soon. I'm just waiting for some information from them. So if you are in need of terms and conditions, right? You don't know what, you know, what to send for your service agreement. You don't know what you should do for your planning a fee agreement. All of that, this, uh, this partnership is going to allow you to have legal set of terms and conditions, even if you're in a seller or travel state, whatever that may be. That's really the hole that I definitely have seen um, with our students. So we intend to bridge, uh, bridge that gap for you all too by partnering with that. That will allow you guys to do that discount. So that's going to be coming in the first quarter as well. So look out for that. Um, for those of you that have already um, uh, up, you know, you, you have purchased our or enrolled in our Travel Joy Accelerator program, you have access to our Opus community. This is a new community that is launching for our students. And this is where the Q&A is going to happen. This is where we will be doing technology and business process specific trainings, uh, tips and 
and information inside of that community. You all already have access to that. I'll be launching that out to the greater audience. Um, it will be a membership type of community where like right now I go live every week. This will have very specific uh, support by me and my team inside of this community and special training that will be available and interaction for training relative to your business inside of the Opus community. So for those who want to know what Opus stands for, that is our business process that you will hear me talk a lot about in 2023. That is Operation Pillars of Success. Um, that is what we will be doing. So the travel request process is part of that, those, that pillar. Um, and so now we will have a community and a support group that's around that, that will not be hosted inside of Facebook that will be hosted inside of the online travel boss school. All right. And then the last thing is, is I already talked about the travel request process. We will be releasing a client booking method process. That will most likely be coming in um, the second quarter at the end of first quarter. But just like we have wrapped up the travel request process, we've got detail. We have we have emails, we have forms, we have confirmation pages out of Travel Joy. We have the entire gamut associated with Travel Joy for the request process. We will be releasing the same. Excuse me, the same thing for the client booking method. So once they've said yes, book Aruba. Now what? What are the emails that you need to be sending out? What are the forms that you need to do? What do you, what kind of terms should you be attaching to all of that? That will be coming inside of the client booking method. We'll be packaging all of that up and make that available in courses with steps and task lists and all of that that you can um, implement in your travel business as well. So how are you guys feeling about that? So for those of you that put travel requests, I will uh, reach out to you and send you the link. Literally, it's $7. Like, I, there's not gonna be any surprise. Let me just tell you now, it's $7 for the travel request process. It's a steal, right? Uh, like, it's it just doesn't get any cheaper than that. And um, the accelerator program, um, uh, we did a sale on that. If you're interested in that, I'll talk to you about that. But the the seller the accelerator bundle includes the request process and it really talks about how Travel Joy can help you in all of the stages of the process. So lots of stuff going on in 2023. I'm so so super excited about that. Um, and so for seven bucks, listen, you'll get access to what I believe to be the best training in the planet when it comes to defining your travel request process and really just what you should think about. I think we've got some bonuses that also come with that. I think one of the bonuses training on the discovery call and all that. So anyway, I will give you all of those, the links to that and everything um, after this call. Listen, that was a lot in an hour that we talked about, but there's a lot for us to do because it's not easy being the bomb.com. It's not being, it's not easy being awesome, right? It takes a lot of effort. Um, it takes a lot of work on y'all's part to do the amazing things that you do. And so I love you for it. Your clients love you for it. Love yourself for it. And as you go into 2023, I wish you nothing but continued success, newfound success, and continue rocking, like rocking it. That's it, right? So I will um, reach out to all those people that said that they want uh, the travel request process. I'll send you a direct message with the link. Uh, actually, I may even just post it link and tag you there, but I will uh, take care of that in just a few minutes. But listen, if I don't talk to you, have a fabulous new year. And then I will see you on January 4th, which is the next first Wednesday of the month, right before we're going. That's like five days before I leave for Dubai. So, and I'm, I, I, I'm not going to commit that I'm going to go live in Dubai. I'm going to try, but I may be having too much fun. We're hosting 11 people in Dubai. Uh, most of the group is agent, um, agents who've never been. I've never been. So we're super excited about going there. There'll be another opportunity to do a fam trip in um, Dubai. We still have uh, a couple of spots in Cuba. If you're interested in Cuba, we can do uh, Cuba. Reach out to me on that. Super, super excited to be working with all of you. Super excited with all the new faces that we have in the group. Have a wonderful new year and I will see you on the other side of it next week. Have a great night. Bye-bye.